Hello everyone, welcome back to another video. Um, in this video, I'm going to be going over why I think this strategy is one of the best strategies out there for the S&P 500. If you haven't seen the previous two videos, make sure to go and see those because it's going to give you a background to what I'm actually talking about right now because you're not really going to understand why this is a good strategy if you don't understand what the strategy actually is. So I've linked those up in the top right corner. Um, you can go and watch those now and then come back to this video and think about the understanding behind the strategy. So let's get straight into the reasons and then we can discuss what the market is doing afterwards. So the first reason why I think this is the perfect strategy is the compound effect. Now with this strategy you've almost got like a double compound effect going on and it is absolutely magical because you've got the daily uh, system where you've got trades going on constantly and you're basically always in the market and especially when there's a trending market you're always in it constantly and then on the lower time frame you've then got the the compound effect of those smaller trades that are higher risk reward um, that are going to be getting those big boosts to the account so the daily is more of that slow compounding over time and then you've got that short five minute compounding which isn't as accurate and it isn't as sustainable but whenever you get it it's a big hit to the account and it bumps it up quickly so it's almost like you're getting a double compound effect going on with the account and it is absolutely amazing when it works well the second reason why i think this is the perfect strategy is because you can lose on the five minute or the lower time frame and you can still make money because you've got that daily system churning away, going over a long period of time, you can still make money when you lose money on the lower time frames. And the third reason, now there's a lot more reasons to this, um, I'll probably be getting into those later down the road, but the third reason why I think this is a really fundamental strategy and why I think it's probably one of the best strategies that I've made um, on the channel to date is because when there's not a good trade on the lower time frame, you can still make money. You don't have to trade the lower time frame. When there's not a good trade, when you're not comfortable trading that day, for whatever reason, you don't need to take that trade, you don't need to place it, and you can still make money on the daily because you've built up those positions over the last however long, and you're making money as the market goes up. Now, the, the five minute obviously is one of these things where you can trade and make a lot of money quickly. But the goal that we have is to build wealth through the S&P 500 over a long period of time through that compound effect. And you don't need to be trading every single day to make money. And that is the magical thing. Now, let's head over to the charts and I can talk about the market and the situation we're currently in and why I think this could actually be a good opportunity to be buying right now in the markets and why I'm not scared to place my trades. So as you can see over the past kind of, well, since January 1st, we've been in this downtrend and we kind of came down to this key level right here. Now I don't really look at key levels, but this is quite a key level to be looking at. And we bounced off of it. And then on this candle right here, we've clearly taken out the low and we are now pushing further down. For me, this is obviously quite scary. And for a lot of traders, this is quite scary. But let me show you a chart that might give you a little bit of confidence. So right now, you're looking at the S&P 500 total return index um, on the daily chart year to date. Okay, and we've got lots and lots and lots and lots and lots and lots of dates in here um, from the S&P. And this is what we're currently at. So this is the level that we were currently at, right? And this is that little bounce in there. So we've, we've broken that little bit of a low and this is the year to date. Now, if we have a look at the 2009, 2020, 2001 and 2008 uh, prices, you can see that 2001 is actually slap bang where we currently are. 11.89% return minus that year, and we're currently on 11.83%. 2008, which is obviously the big crash that everyone knows of, it was at minus 37%. And you can see, it's, it's quite hard to see, but I'll get my little drawing tool up and show you guys so that you can clearly see this. If we, get, if we can have a look at the 2008 um, charts, you can see we have this little bit of a movement in there. 
Now, obviously, I'm not doing this 100% accurately, but as you can see, then it gets a little bit faded in here. So I'm trying to follow it as best as I possibly can. So that is the chart as close as I possibly can to the 2008. And we have kind of followed that a little bit. And right here, we broke it and we followed down. Now, if you have a look at how many charts are above this line, you will see that there's two that are below. We've got one here, and we've got the 2008. And then we've got 2001 that is slap bang right where we are right now. The rest of the years for the S&P is above. And this is why I am bullish. Because, at the, like, you can look at the news, you can look at whatever you want to, you can look at, you know, I don't know, some data that says that it's going to crash another 30% or whatever. At the end of the day, the majority of the S&P 500 years are above where we currently are which means this has a high probability in my mind. Now, there might be someone out there that is incredible at probabilities and, I don't know, they've looked at thousands of pieces of data and they say, okay, this isn't a high probability chance to be bullish. But for me, just looking at this simple image of saying where we currently are, there's two points, there's two years that are below, the rest are above. That to me is good enough to say, okay, yeah, the probability is that the market is going to move higher. And, you know, it, for me, that is good enough to say yes. And if you look at 2020, let me draw this in a different color. If you have a look at 2020, let me just do this. Okay, so if you look at 2020, you can see this is the point right here that we are currently at in 2020. Now, if you were to say this move is bullish, which it currently is, right, we are at that same kind of point in the market where we're minus 11.83%. Right here is 11, minus 11.83% 11 in 2020, yet people were buying clearly because the market moved higher now what's to say that the market isn't going to do the same thing right now and move higher with it and we finish somewhere in the region of this right that there's nothing to say that we don't we don't go there and previously in streams that i've done in collaborations that i've done with other channels i have said multiple times i don't see why we can't break 5000 this year and for me, that 5,000 mark is not a massive move. Now, it clearly is a massive move because, you know, we're moving from 4,000 to 5,000. That is a big jump. But I do think that we could move in the region of 4,800 to 5,000 by the end of the year. Now, obviously, that is quite a large move. I don't know how large. Let me have a little bit of a look. Now, my, my idea of where this is going to go might change after I see how far this is. I think it's this one. I'm not 100% sure, but it might be this one. So if we go to 5,000, that's a 21% move. So after this move, after a 21% move up to that 5,000 mark, that would end the year at 9%. So if we go back to this, where's 9%? It's about here, right? So if we say that's 9%, 2020, at the same, almost the same time of the year, like pretty much exactly the same time of the year, it was at that same point, and it ended up being a 18% year. If we can move to 5,000 by the end of the year, that brings us in at 9.4%, let's say 10%. I don't see why that's not possible. Did that make sense? I don't know. Um, I, I don't see why we can't do that by the end of the year. So for me, I am still bullish on the markets, even though everywhere in the news, every YouTuber, everyone's going, the market's going to crash. It's all doomsday. Everyone sell. 
I don't see why we can't break a 9% year. And if you have a look at kind of the data around um, starting the year at a minus, where we end up, the majority of the time, we end up in a bullish year. And I don't see why we can't do that again. So I know this was kind of a rambly video now. It's kind of got to the point where it's a bit rambly, but um, I just wanted to make my point and make sure that, you know, some of you guys that are following along with the channel understand why I am still bullish on the S&P. Um, I hope you have an amazing day. I hope you've enjoyed this video. Um, if you want to join the private group where I send out a monthly fundamentals report going over the fundamental side of my trading, hit the join button below and I will see you in that private group. Hope you have an amazing day and I will see you in the next video.